care and maintenance of young trees. Young fruit bearing trees need care to grow and yield good quality fruits. The following are what the trees need in order to grow. First, young fruit bearing trees should be cultivated. Cultivation must be shallow to avoid damaging the roots of the young trees. Weeds must be removed so that they will not compete with the young fruit trees for the available plant food nutrients and moisture. Mulching Mulching the fruit tree keeps down weeds, adds humus to the soil, conserves moisture, and keeps the soil temperature cool during the dry season. Rice straw, sawdust, rice hulls, and grass clippings can be used in mulching. Spacing techniques for fruit bearing trees. In orchard establishments, there are several planting patterns or arrangements which are based on the form of geometric shape of the closest hills. The common types of planting patterns in row planted fruit trees are the following. The first one is square pattern. This is the most common planting pattern which is done either crosswise or lengthwise. In this arrangement, one tree or group of tree in a common hill occupies the corner of a square which has four sides of equal length. A planting area of 10 meters by 10 meters spacing will result in 10 rows and 10 cross rows which are both 10 meters apart and perpendicular to each other. Diagonally, the plants form rows which are about 7.1 meters apart. Like the corner of a square, the trees are usually a distance apart and right angles to each other. I have here the example of a square pattern. Banana farm. And the vegetable garden. The second spacing techniques for fruit-bearing trees we have the quincox or diamond pattern. This is modified form of a square pattern formed by closest trees that form a square with an additional tree at the center of these four trees. I have here the example of the quincox or diamond pattern. Let's see the example of the quincox or diamond pattern. Mahogany plantation. The third one we have rectangular pattern. This is almost similar to the square pattern, aside from having two sets of opposite sides with different length. I have here the example of the rectangular pattern. Rice planting. Lastly, of the spacing techniques for fruit-bearing trees, we have triangular or hexagonal pattern. This pattern is different from others because it does not require fillers. In this pattern, the permanent trees in the adjacent row are not opposite in the first row adjoining, but they are opposite to the center of the spaces between the trees. The scientific methods of planting trees. The first scientific methods of planting trees is deep hole method. This method is applicable to areas where the subsoil is not hard and the drainage is good. The second one we have slat method. In this method, the hole is deep enough to cover the entire root system. The tools do not come in contact with the seedling. Be careful not to move or harm the seedling. The third scientific method of planting trees is trench method. Place the tree seedling at the center of the hole and at the correct depth so as not to harm the root system. Center hole method. The hole in the center should be large enough to contain the root system of the seedling roots in natural position. Fill the center with topsoil before placing the subsoil around the stem, pressing it by the use of the finger or fists. Side hole method. 
Place the seedling on one side of the hole. Fill the hole with soil following the same procedure. Lastly, for the scientific methods of planting trees, we have cone method. The seedling is placed on the top of a cone in such a way that the roots are properly and evenly spread out in each slope of the cone. Rules for tree planting Land preparation for planting fruit trees will ensure the growth of plants, the control against weeds, pests, and other plant diseases, and the soil retention of moisture for future planting. The first rule for tree planting is seedlings should be planted. Their roots will reach deeper in wet soil than in dry soil during summer. Second, root color should approximately be in the same position as in the nursery. Third, the root system should approximately be given space. Fourth, Set the seedling on mounds when planting in an area with poor drainage. Fifth, in dry seasons, the seedling should be set below the general level of soil with the use of small canal furrows. Sixth, best and fresh the soil without organic matter should be in filling the hole above the roots. Seven. The seedling should be planted in the middle of the niche when planting along the slope. Eight, only one plant should be set in one hole except for beautification, soil control, or plant survival. Nine, trees should be planted directly and the soil around the roots should be firmed thoroughly. Guidelines for planting fruit-bearing trees Growing fruit-bearing trees is a challenging but a rewarding job. Fruit-bearing trees not only offer striking ornamental effects, but also provide a family with fresh homegrown fruits. The following are the guidelines in planting fruit-bearing trees. First, planting site. Choose a planting site with a good sunlight. Fruit-bearing trees need more than 6 hours of sunlight. Check the soil in the planting site. The ideal soil for fruit-bearing trees is deep, fertile, well-drained, and not too heavy. If the soil condition is poor, dig a large planting hole and amend the soil. Add peat moss if the soil is heavy. The second guidance for planting fruit-bearing trees is the size of the tree. The final height and spread of fruit-bearing trees depends upon the planting site, pruning, and maintenance. Fruit-bearing trees can grow in different sizes. We have dwarf, upright growing, semi-dwarf, and standard. Another guidelines for planting fruit-bearing trees is spacing. Fruit-bearing trees can be planted in an orchard or in a smaller home landscape. If the space is small, choose genetic dwarf fruit-bearing trees. They just needed a smaller space for growing. To reduce space requirements of any fruit-bearing trees, carefully prone as an spalier. Another guidelines for planting fruit-bearing trees is when planting. Never let the root system dry out. If you are in the process of planting and there is a need to be interrupted for a while, cover the roots of the plants with the moist soil or cloth. Another guidelines for planting fruit-bearing trees is mulching. All fruit-bearing trees benefit from mulch, weeds and grasses over the root arena. Although weeds and grasses compete with the nutrients of the tree, they protect it from the existence of rodents. It is recommended to leave 12 to 24 inches around the trunk clear of mulch. Another guidelines for planting fruit-bearing trees is watering. Provide the fruit-bearing trees with adequate amount of water throughout the growing years. Another guidelines for planting fruit-bearing trees is pollination. Fruit-bearing trees should not be surrounded with too many weeds and flowers 
so that bees are concentrated on pollinating the trees. Pollination is very important for fruit-bearing trees to yield more fruits afterwards. Another guidelines for planting fruit-bearing trees is applying fertilizer. Never apply fertilizer on newly planted trees as their developing roots will be damaged. Apply fertilizer with the recommended amount annually. Pruning is another guidelines for planting fruit-bearing trees. Fruit-bearing trees benefit from pruning. Pruning is a horticultural practice that alters the form and growth of the plants. Several techniques in pruning are used for different types of fruit-bearing trees. Lastly, for the guidelines of planting fruit-bearing trees is thinning. The fruits from fruit-bearing trees planted for three years or less should be removed so that they will develop good vegetative growth. Thinning is reducing the number of immature fruits to produce better and mature fruits. Thinning requirements vary from different types of fruit-bearing trees. Proper care for fruit-bearing trees. Here are some tips on how to take proper care for fruit-bearing trees. First, build a tree guard. When the seed of the trees has been planted in the orchard, the young plant should be protected from any harm to ensure its healthy growth. Build a tree guard for the young plant to protect them from roaming animals, people's steps, and playful hands of children. Second, Water the tree crops. Irrigation is the term given to a number of different methods of supplying water to the soil. Its purpose is to supply water at a time when growing crops need it most. There are three general methods of irrigation used in orchards. First, sprinkle irrigation. The orchard's water supply is applied in the form of artificial rain. The second irrigation system is surface irrigation. This method of irrigation is commonly used in the field. The water is applied on the surface of the soil by forest or by flooding. And lastly, for the irrigation system, subsurface irrigation. This type of irrigation is done by laying tiles on the ground deep enough to avoid damage when plowing. In this type, the water is allowed to flow into the main canal or ditches that are slightly higher than the laterals. The water is administered to the whole field or garden. Using fertilizers The soil in the garden or in the farm needs other nutrients to balance their composition to be able to increase productivity of the crops. Plants get nutrients from the soil. The commonly required nutrients by the plants are the following. First, we have potassium, required to make the plant healthy by facilitating the circulation of nutrients in the plants. Second, nitrogen, required for the growth of the vegetative parts such as stems and leaves. And lastly, we have phosphorus, it required for good flowers and fruits, also for healthy roots. Fertilizer. Fertilizer is any substance that is added to the soil to increase the available nutrients present in the soil, which helps in the growth of the plants. There are different kinds of fertilizers, the organic, the chemical, and the natural. Most farmers use chemical fertilizers, but nowadays, many of them are already shifting to organic fertilizers. Here are some benefits of using organic fertilizers. Organic fertilizers increase the productivity and growth of the plants and trees with their carbon-based compound components. The first one is production of non-toxic food. Using organic fertilizers give assurance to the consumers or buyers that the food they are about to eat are free of harmful chemicals. Eating organic produce are less prone to diseases such as cancer, stroke, and skin disease rather than foods produced using chemical fertilizers. Second benefits of using organic fertilizer is on-farm production. Most organic
organic fertilizers are prepared in the backyard or in the farm. The cost of preparing this kind of fertilizers is cheaper than the chemical fertilizers. Third, low capital investment. Organic fertilizer help the soil maintain its structure and its nutrients holding capacity. Practicing organic farming for many years makes the soil enriched with essential nutrients. Therefore, the plants planted in farm which applies organic farming requires less fertilizers. Fourth, maintaining the fertility of the soil. Using organic fertilizers for a long time maintains the fertility of the soil, such as in India and in China, where the oldest civilization took place. Agriculture has been practiced there for thousands of years, but then the soil has remained fertile. With continuous use of organic fertilizers, the soil will remain fertile unless farmer, farmers will opt to use chemical fertilizers. And fifth, safe environment. The components of organic fertilizers are biodegradable, which are safe to the environment. They do not cause pollution unlike chemical fertilizers, which are harmful to the environment. And chemical fertilizers contaminate both land and water and even cause um, several diseases to people and animals. Fertilizer Fertilizer is any substance that is added to the soil to increase the available nutrients present in the soil which helps in the growth of the plants. There are different kinds of fertilizers, the organic, the chemical, and the natural. Most farmers use chemicals fertilizers, but nowadays, many of them are already shifting to organic fertilizers. Here are some benefits of using organic fertilizers. Organic fertilizers increase the productivity and growth of the plants and trees with their carbon-based compound components. The first benefits of using organic fertilizer is production of non-toxic food. Using organic fertilizers give assurance to the consumer or buyers that the food they are about to eat are free of harmful chemicals. Eating organic produce are less prone to diseases such as cancer, stroke, and skin disease rather than foods produced using chemical fertilizers. Second, on-farm production. Most organic fertilizers are prepared in the backyard or in the farm. The cost of preparing this kind of fertilizer is cheaper than the chemical fertilizers. Third, low capital investment. Organic fertilizers help the soil maintain its structure and its nutrients holding capacity. Practicing organic farming for many years makes the soil enriched with essential nutrients. Therefore, the plants planted in a farm which applies organic farming requires less fertilizer. Fourth, maintains the fertility of the soil. Using organic fertilizer for a long time maintains the fertility of the soil, such as in India and in China, where the oldest civilization took place. Agriculture has been practiced there for thousands of years, but then the soil has remained fertile. When continuous use of organic fertilizers, the soil will remain fertile unless farmers will opt to use chemical fertilizers. And lastly, safe environment. The components of organic fertilizers are biodegradable, which are safe to the environment. They do not cause pollution unlike chemical fertilizers, which are harmful to environment. Chemical fertilizers contaminate both land and water and even cause several diseases to people and animals. Different types of organic fertilizers. There are different types of organic fertilizers prepared for every need of the soil and the plant. These are made of different organic waste. Here are some different types of organic fertilizers. The first one is plant-based fertilizer. This type of organic fertilizer is good in conditioning the soil rather than providing nutrients for the soil. It breaks down quicker than the other organic fertilizers. The materials used in this type 
help to add drainage and moisture retention to poor soil. Some examples of materials used to make this are the following. Fruit and vegetables peelings, molasses, legumes cover crops, green manure cover crops, and seaweed. The second type of organic fertilizer is animal-based fertilizer. This type of organic fertilizer is best applied for leafy plants within the early weeks of planting to provide them strong growth. The materials used in it are gathered from animal waste or animal byproduct. Some examples are the following. Milk, bone meal, animal manure, fish emulsion, blood meal, and urine. Lastly, for the types of organic fertilizer, we have mineral-based fertilizer. This type of organic fertilizer adds nutrients to the soil to allow healthy plant growth. It also helps to lower or raise the pH level of the soil. Some examples of minerals used are the following. Epsom, Epsom salt or magnesium and sulfur, and calcium and gardening or calcium. Methods of applying fertilizers. The first method of applying fertilizer is broadcasting. Fertilizers are scattered by hands in all durations of the field wherein it is harrowed under the soil. Fertilizers are evenly applied in this method. Broadcasting refers to spreading fertilizers uniformly all over the field or suitable for crops with dense instance of the plant's roots permit the whole volume of the soil. And large doses of fertilizers are applied and insoluble phosphatic fertilizer such as rock phosphate are used. The second method of applying fertilizer is band application. Fertilizers are applied on the soil around the plants. The soil absorbs the fertilizer when watering the plants. When the crops like sugarcane, potato, maize, cereals, etc. are sown close together in rows, the fertilizer is applied in continuous band on one or both sides of the row, which is known as row placement. Foliar application is another method of applying fertilizer. In this method, the fertilizer is mixed with water before spraying it directly to the plants. As you can see, I have here the example on how to apply the foliar application fertilizer. Another method of applying fertilizer is top dressing. Fertilizers are spread evenly to both the growing plants and its soil. The objective of applying top dressing is to supply nitrogen in readily available form to growing plants. That would be all from this topic. I hope you learn a lot. Thank you and keep safe.